Hello and welcome to another Robot Varnak Fixing Things video. Today's video is about how to get an old uh, wall clock moving again. Uh, the movement on this old clock is finally broken down and uh, the person wants to keep the the clock case intact with so the, the movement just needs to be replaced. So if you want to find a new clock movement, you just do an internet search for quartz clock movement. There's a bunch of companies out there that sell them. And uh, it all depends on how much you want to pay. A, a new movement like this might cost about five or ten dollars. And if you a new clock might be five or ten dollars if you buy a cheap Chinese import. This is a one of those old vintage Spartus quartz clocks. So let me know in the comments if you uh, had a Spartus clock movement in your time and what you think of them, if they're good clocks or not. The only thing is Spartus has been out of business some years now, I believe. I don't know who owns the trademark now, but uh, they're not in production anymore. And some of the old timers like the old uh, style of the Spartus clocks out there and that's why this person wants to uh, get this clock running again in the same clock cabinet so if uh, if you don't want to pay uh, say ten dollars for a, just an ordinary movement when you can buy a whole new clock for ten dollars uh, so you have to be careful with your money but the purpose of this video is well before we get started uh, remember to like subscribe and comment let me know what you think of this video if you want to see more make sure you subscribe and all that and do whatever you need to do to see more videos so let's get started you'll need a pair of needle nose pliers a little flathead screwdriver and this uh, thing is to these uh, new clocks are pretty much made all the same. It's a plastic face, uh, plastic uh, lens here that you pull off. And if you look in the back, there's usually plastic tabs that hold the plastic lens in place. So there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, you can press the screwdriver in there to unlatch it, or if, since it's big, like these old old uh, Spartus movements. You could just uh, kind of press down on there and take the thing, take the lens off. Yeah, and make sure you don't have any uh, really bad uh, scratches on there. Or you could polish it off, polish the plastic if it's scratched. And examine uh, the, the movement here. So you pull a lot of the second hands are friction fit with a little pin on there. If you could see it, little pin in there. See that? There's a little pin in there that rotates. We go a second. So now use your pair of needle nose pliers and take the take the nut off for the second hand minute hand there. Yeah, it's at the minute hand. So the minute hand is taken off. And a lot of the hour hands are friction fit on there. So you can just pull that right off like that there. Now the nut might be on there really good. So carefully without scratching the paper, loosen the nut. And then use your fingers to take the nut off. Your fingers are softer than the pliers. So you don't want to scratch the paper and take the movement out. They say this movement is supposed to be so good but it turned out to be a piece of junk. If you know what company this is let me know in the comments. I don't want to buy this thing again. And uh, let's see. So what you want to do now is make sure your uh, parts fit. If you want to use this second hand make sure the threads are compatible with the other parts. When you buy a clock movement like this, they usually come with the, the parts to get it running again. And you'll notice this doesn't have a wall hanger. It was using the old uh, vintage parts from the Spartus company to uh, get the, to hang the clock up. So, 
and I'm just one has the the little shaft bolt there so you want to make sure your hanger fits there good like that and you want to make sure that the shafts are kind of equal there so you see one's a little longer than the other so you want to space them out so in the clock if you put the shaft is too long it's going to bump up into the the lens so you want the shaft to be equal to the original so you're gonna to have to use a, a spacer here to bring the keep the shaft in the dial correctly since there's lots of room here there's plenty of room in the old, these old clocks to space the movement out so that's what I'm going to do so if uh, you just get a piece of scrap scrap uh, material like a th thin piece of plywood and put that on there now you'll notice the shafts are relatively the same that's at the same thickness so put your uh, make sure you put your wall hanger on there and rubber washer to keep in place now you can also test fit it there to make sure it works see it's too long it needs to put some more rubber washers on there like that there So you want to space it out to see now enough room in there for the, the movement. So make sure you're now's a good time to clean the movement and make it look nice and basically uh, clean up to me make it look new to put your dial on correctly like that. Now it's time to put the movement on there when you're putting these move, movements on there you want to put the battery on the bottom so if the battery starts leaking it won't uh, affect the mechanicals up there so put the battery on the bottom so when these cheap batteries start leaking the battery acid won't uh, get up in there so And when you put your uh, washer in there, make sure you put the shiny side up because a lot of them are punch press and you have, see it has uh, rough edges on there. So you want the nice shiny side up. Uh, start this nut by hand. Make sure you're, well, the wall hanger is going to be going up. So in that case, bend it over like that. And now you see it goes below the surface so it'll fit flush on the wall there. So you want the hanger. So if the hanger's too long, just bend it over there and so it'll fit flush on the wall like that. There, there it is. It's nice and flush on the wall. So now get it uh, finger tight. Make sure it's lined up well and use your needle nose pliers and tighten the nut a few uh, turns there don't over tighten it, it'll break the movement or crack the housing so be very careful, very careful now the important thing is making sure the old hands work with the new movement and lining up the hands You'll notice that there's a flat part there for the minute hand. So I see how the is like a keyway that fits there. So turn the minute hand to like 12 o'clock there. Once you tighten the nut, it'll be more tight. Most of the people recommend you set the clock for 12 even. So the hour hand and the minute hand both get lined up correctly. 
So press it on there, make sure it's lined up to midnight. The witching hour. So let me know in the comments what your witching hour is. So now yeah, you got the hour hand set up there, then you put the minute hand. Since this is going to have the second hand, you need the regular uh, bolt, the minute hand thing there, so the second hand can go through there. So carefully start the thread on there. Get on there, finger tight. You want to make sure that your bolt is on there exactly flush so if it's crooked you'll strip the threads and it'll be ruined so carefully start the the bolt the bolt on there and make sure it fits nicely tighten it finger tight make sure both hands are lined up at midnight now carefully holding both hands at the correct spot, use the needle nose pliers and carefully tw twist it just a little bit to lock it in place. Now you'll see even if you movement, move it a little bit the hands stay at midnight so there's no error. Now the next thing is to put the second hand on the same way. If, if you're working with an old second hand, you, you don't want to have it too, you want to have it on there so it's uh, nice and tight. So you could first try, you'll see that there's two, if it would focus there, you'll see it's like a split shaft. So you might want to use the needle nose pliers to carefully, just a little bit, put some pressure on there so it fits on the shaft. So now all three hands are lined up at midnight. Make sure the the hands will fit there, so but behind the lens, you don't want the hands rubbing or scratching the plastic. It'll cause the clock to probably lose time because of its resistance on the hands. It'll slow down the, the the motor. So make sure the hands are the hands are all the hands can pass each other during time. So now is a good time to move the clock through an hour to make sure the hands don't uh, bump into each other like that. So make sure now it's one o'clock you see the hour hand correctly pointing at one so now you can put the lens back on. And uh, well, that's all there is to it now. Go ahead and here's another tip folks. If, you, know, you can't even see the polarity of the battery compartment there so when you carefully go through the trouble of seeing it use a permanent marker and put a plus and a minus in there so now there's no doubt as to the polarity there so that's a useful robot varnic tip for today when you're changing the clock movements make the polarity clearly visible and then test the clock to make sure it works. 
And there it's working, folks. And there you have it. So remember to like, subscribe, and comment, and let me know what you think of this uh, video. Would it be worth saving an old, uh, an old, uh, I'm not sure how old this clock is. If you know, if you know how old this clock is, let me know in the comments, because the, the, the person is very attached to this thing, and I don't see why. It's, it's crazy to me when you can get a brand new clock for $10 in the store or, or on the internet. So make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. And that's it for now. Come again for another fun and exciting Robot Varnick video. Goodbye for now.